ugly and extremely stupid teenager, Tsubasa Shiki moves from Tokyo to the city of Kitami in Hokkaido, and this city boy meets a village girl, yeah, you heard me right, a straight-up female bush animal who takes a liking to him. Minami Fuyuki might be a village girl, but she's wiser than this colossally rizless idiot because she manages to take him under her wing. Finding her unlike any other girl he has met before, stupid Tsubasa finds himself drawn to this local Hokkaido gal. A young man arrives at the outskirts of Hokkaido. His dad was supposed to take him, but he's got work today. Such a hard working bum. The young man came down from the car not far from the city. He admired the city and noted how the city is quieter than and not as crowded as Tokyo. He was immediately hit with the cold of the town that is coated with snow. It's like a little white town. He regrets his decision to come down from the car when he sees a yellow haired angel standing not far away. He sees her bare legged and is shocked because he is fully, wait, fully is an understatement. He's heavily clothed. She informs him that his destination is a three-hour walk and calling a taxi would take 30 minutes. His eggplant would have become a frozen mini sculpture by then, just like the ones of the Greek gods. They wait for the bus. Whilst they wait, the pretty girl finds out that he's from Tokyo. She feels that he'll see her less, but in fact, he feels at home because back in town he was termed lame. They're both 16 and are to attend the same college. What are the odds? He gets lost in thoughts and the girl pulls him back to reality by putting a little snow in his clothes. I bet he was thinking about putting some of his handmade snow on her clothes as well. She laughs at his reaction and he calls her pretty. The bus finally arrives and before they board the bus he asks for her name, Minami. He's so flustered after hearing her name that the idiot forgot to board the bus. While on the bus, she hopes they'll be in the same class. He arrives at school and introduces himself as Tsubasa Shiki to the class. Unlike every other anime, he's seated at the back though, but this time at the left side of the class. He looks around the class looking for the girl he saw the other day, she was not in class. He began to inflate a thought that he's always liked dark haired and neat girls, but that thought deflated into oblivion when she walked in through the back door. She jumped on him immediately when she saw him, kind of like straight from a scene on another website if you know. You know, as class goes on, the drop dead temperature is out to get Shiki. He realizes that he's the only one in class who's not using a blanket. Mina short for Minami offer her second blanket because she always brings two. He thinks of the leftover warmth from Mina's body that came along with the blanket and a devious thought slipped in. After school, he returned the blanket. She teased him after smelling the blanket that it feels like they just smooched. That's some imaginative riz if you ask me. In a way to thank her, she asked him to walk her to the station where she'll board a train. On their way, they have a little chit chat and one thing leads to to another, Shiki agrees to visit her the next day. The next day, being the first time he's visiting a girl, he acts all nervous. He's most definitely been feeling very cold, so the room heater made it very easy for him. He gets all comfortable, she goes about rizzing him up, she brings him thick yogurt, but spills a few over her tracksuit in just the right area. She goes in and changes to a warm and nice looking linen nightwear. Shiki fights the eggplant demon emanating from his desire and pulls out a movie he hasn't watched yet and says they should watch it. This is what I do when I want to Netflix and chill with my Latina baddies, but we just end up watching my anime channel instead, then the channel rizzes her up for me. As if Mina bending over and setting up the movie was not enough, the movie was a romantic one with kissing scenes and more crazy things. He's holding himself together, she makes a crazy mating sound that freaks him out. He turns around and sees her sleeping. She wakes up after a while and Shiki immediately arranges for himself to leave. When she realized what happened, she ran after him to apologize and they ended up going to a restaurant. Mina tiptoes up behind Shiki who is engrossed in reading a flyer about a winter festival. She whispers in his eye and he reacts. She noticed the flyer and asked if he was interested, he said he's going to check it out at the weekend. Mani went ahead and invited herself as she happily gallops away. Shiki thinks of the weekend meeting as a date. Mina's mom serves dinner. Mina, her baby sis, and her mom gather around the table to eat. Her father's not back yet. Her mom suggests a weekend fun outing, but Mina tells her mom and little sister she's going to the festival with a friend and can't join them. She feels a bit hesitant now as the last time she went to the festival she was a child. She feels it might be a little childish for Shiki. On the weekend, Mina and Shiki agree to meet up at the station. Shiki on his way to the station is still flustered that the whole arrangement feels like a date. The look on Shiki's face amazed Mina. 
They enjoy their time at the festival playing games, taking slides and the sorts. While they take warm coca, Shiki thanks Mina for tagging along. Mina blushed and expressed her fear that he wouldn't like the place, so she told him about her childhood memories about the festival. She stood up and walked, please take note five steps away from Shiki. While she was expressing herself, she tripped and Shiki, who's one, sitting at the table and two, five steps away, jumps in and saves Mina. Unless bro possesses the skill, flash steps, then there's no other explanation. During lunchtime at school, they eat lunch together. After seeing his reaction to the food at the festival, Mina went out of her way to acquire cup ramen for Shiki to taste. She prepares it in three minutes and feeds him. She teases him about being turned on by the food, he opens his own lunchbox, and it blows her mind away. After the meal, Shiki thanks her for letting him taste her cup noodles. Mina was shocked when Shiki told her it was his first time tasting cup noodles and also going to the mall, going to a girl's house, going to a festival with a friend, etc. And with those facts placed on ground, Mina concludes that he's a spoiled rich kid, but he denies. She suddenly asks if she can visit his house. Shiki agrees but feels nervous about introducing her to his grandma. On the way, they stumble upon a snow mold. Mina playfully drags Shiki into the snow mold. It was a small space, and I totally understood how Shiki felt being in such a small space with Mina. He successfully pulled out of the mold, and there she was, Shiki's grandma was standing. Grandma's thoughts run wild. Shiki introduced Mina as a classmate, and this strikes a nerve. At first, Shiki's grandma wasn't too happy about Mina and tried to dismiss her, saying she and her grandson had something to do. Mina doesn't back down, she offers to help her with her umbrella and gives her directions. When Mina saw Shiki's home, she chickens out over the size and tries to retreat, but grandma invites Mina for tea. In Shiki's room, Mina runs around taking pictures of the room. Shiki's grandma notices the joy Mina brings him. Seeing the innocent smile on Shiki's face, she decides to trust Mina. One way or another, Mina has persuaded Shiki to tag along for the class ski party. He has never gone skiing and is very worried how he will turn out. It's no mystery to the reason why the people in Hokkaido would be masters at skiing. Everyone seems bright and cheerful except a very pretty ruby that Mina tries to talk to but gets no response. Her name is Sayuri, Yuri for shorts. Mina admires her style and composure and would love to be friends with her. Yuri is seated next to Shiki in the bus while Mina is sitting just a seat ahead. Shiki didn't even notice the diamond beside him and when Mina calls his attention to her, he stares at her, admiring her beauty for some seconds. This annoys Mina that she turns around and sits properly on her chair. They arrived and everyone was grouped by skill, leaving Shiki and shockingly, Yuri. Shiki tries to talk to her, but she puts on her earbuds. They try walking. Yuri falls, and just as she gets up, Mina comes out of nowhere, soaring in the sky. She is immediately scolded by the teacher and heads off. Yuri finally spoke. She gave off a very heavy loner girl aura and a lot of jealousy for Mina's outgoing personality. She asks Shiki if they're together and he says it's nothing like that. The teacher came back after a long while of deserting them, apologized, and gave them a break. They head to the bus to grab their lunch. Shiki takes his and runs to the cafeteria to eat because he feels it'd be weird if they eat in the bus. He forgot his chopsticks and came back to get them. He encounters Yuri something somewhere around shirtless. He sees her tummy, the upper part of her bosom. They react and Shiki apologizes. He said he'll take his leave, but she held him back saying she would explain everything as they eat. Shiki is half through his meal and still, she hasn't said anything. She drinks water and speaks up with a loud voice and runs through her explanation saying she sweats a lot, and because of that she avoids anything physically stressing. While they converse, I realize that she's actually not as timid as she looks. She is outgoing and can be loud and free, but she's just struck with sweating condition infused low self-esteem. Shiki hears a sound from her bag. She pulls out something after hesitating for a while, something that is exactly like a PSP game. You won't believe this boy doesn't know what that is. She's playing a game called Crash Sisters Plus, a very feminine game. She's shocked that he doesn't know the game and immediately hands him the gamepad. He tries to navigate his way through but loses the game in seconds. She shows her true nature as she tries to teach him to play, she realizes and composes herself back. Shiki says to him she's totally normal and is very happy that she spoke to him. This made her blush from ear to ear. She says she'll teach Shiki the game if he'll call her professor. In Japanese, it's sensei. They run back to the snowfield and they decide to try and ski from the top. They ride the lift where Mina saw them. On the ride, they converse a little. When they arrive at the top of the mountain, Shiki asks a favor from Yuri that if he can ski all the way down without falling, that she'll answer Mina, who desperately wants to be friend. They ski slowly till Shiki gets to the bottom safely, but Yuri was coming with full speed. 
Thankfully, Mina came in to help, and at the end of the day, everyone had a great time. Mina and Shiki made a friend, and Yuri made not just one, but two friends today. The next day, Shiki is met with a power blizzard. He wishes for a snow day because the blizzard is crazy, and the ski trip left him super tired. He thought out loud, saying it'd be impossible for anyone to reach school under this condition. But Grandma came out of the shadows like a wisdom ninja who's been waiting to encourage Shiki to go to school. Shiki hits the road after listening to his grandmother's words. Shiki battles the storm on his way to school, looking like he's trudging through a scene of a battle where his death from Akame Ga Kill is an opponent. The blizzard overpowers him, but he's rescued by Mina and her mom as they drive by and offer him a ride. I'd have a ruler at home, I am not waiting for there to be a blizzard if the show reaches a level, no school for me that day. When Mina's mom finds out that he's the rich boy that Mina's been talking about, she goes all out teasing them, saying they'd be a nice couple, Mina was very embarrassed and blushed like crazy. They finally arrive at school and Mina's mom offers to ride him to school whenever there is a blizzard. I'm the hallway. They also encounter Yuri. Mina ran and hugged her and Yuri also suffers from sore muscles. In class, Mina introduces him to a new stay warm system called heat pads that you'll wear in your jacket. She offers him a pair of hers that she took from her body. At lunchtime, Yuri pops into their class with her gaming device mid-conversation between Mina and Shiki. She tells Shiki that he shouldn't take Mina as an example. Apparently, Mina has a local accent and was brought up in Hokkaido. Yuri was also brought up in Hokkaido, but doesn't have an accent. Shiki notices the gamepad and asks her to teach Mina how to play. Mina eagerly asks Yuri to be her teacher. They all have a blast together, laughing and learning like a quirky trio from My Hero Academia. After school, the three friends hit the local mall. Unlike the busy Tokyo malls, this one is calm and peaceful. Mina and Yuri drag Shiki to the cosmetic section, asking for his advice on what to buy. It's a scene like a slice-of-life anime like K-On, with lots of giggles and silly moments. That evening, Shiki has homework questions and messages Mina for help. Her video calls him from her bathtub, which freaks him out. She hasn't even started her assignment. She's a female version of me. She jumps out of the bath with her video still on. The fall slips from her hand and reveals her everything, but at the same time, time like a cosmic event, Shiki's phone was also falling, and he didn't get to see her, everything. She asked him if he saw anything, he informed her that his phone slipped and almost fell also. The next day, Mina gets in trouble for not turning in her homework. Mina, Shiki, and their classmates go to a karaoke place. Mina is on the microphone and singing her heart out, but what piques my interest is that the first two scenes are of a skeleton and a hallway of skeleton heads. Hearing the words I love you in the song that Mina sang struck a string in Shiki's body. Everyone is amazed by her singing. They clap and cheer, surprised that she has such a beautiful voice. After she finishes, Mina helps Shiki and Yuri pick their songs. She suggests fun songs and encourages them to sing along. They all have a great time laughing and enjoying the music. Everyone was having a good time discussing exams and other things with the guys on one side and the girls on the other, but Mina destroys the peace in the room by bringing up Valentine. Shiki wondered who Mina would give chocolate to this year. A guy asked Mina to get him chocolates too, and she happily agreed. Agreed. She mentioned she planned to make more than the 60 chocolates she gave out last year, so she was probably preparing for a chocolate avalanche. In my opinion, because I once did it, whoever gifts multiple people on Valentine's Day doesn't have a special person to channel all that energy to. When they asked if Yuri would make chocolate, she said she'd rather save up for a PS5. After hanging out, Shiki was left with Mina and Yuri, who both wanted to know if he had a good time. When he said he did, Mina promised to always invite him. That weekend, Yuri ended up gaming instead of shopping, but she found herself sneaking around the mall where Mina happened to spot her. Yuri had gone to buy ingredients for making chocolates, but lied that she was just getting nail polish. She got caught in the lie because her nails were freshly done, so she ended up buying cosmetics knowing Mina would be into that. After shopping, Mina asked what kind of chocolate Yuri liked. She said she enjoyed fruity flavors, which got Mina excited for some. Mina is buying ingredients to make chocolates. Yuri decides to make chocolates too and asks Mina for help. That night, Shiki is studying for his exams while Mina is making chocolates for her classmates. Yuri struggles with making chocolates and calls Mina for help. Mina rushes over but spills milk and soy sauce on her chocolates, ruining them. She stays positive, which touches Yuri. The next day, Mina gives out store-bought chocolates to her classmates, including Yuri and Shiki. One of the classmates rubbishes Mina for the store-bought chocolates, but Mina doesn't let it move her. Yuri witnesses it and sends shivers down his spine with a threat saying he should never speak to Mina that way ever again. 
She's menacing, I think I've found my favorite Gael. Later, when she and Shiki are alone in a classroom, he thanks her for the chocolate but turns around and sees her crying a fountain. She confesses that she ruined her chocolates. Shiki cheers her up by playing the piano. Yuri overhears their conversation and gives Mina and Shiki the chocolates she made. They celebrate with a chocolate party together. The next day in class, the teacher announced that the final exam was coming up the following week. Mina doesn't really want to study and feels discouraged just by thinking of it. Shiki in his nerd world was actually happy. Shiki admitted he's a bookworm and apologized for letting her down. Mina said it was the first time she ever heard someone speak cheerfully about exams. She asked if he was free, and when he said yes, she invited him to a study session. They also asked Yuri to join. The look on Mina's face made him wonder if it was just an excuse so she can mess around with him, but she's just jealous that she'll share her time with him with a third party. The trio marched their way to Mina's house. When they got to Mina's place, they found it empty. Her parents and younger sister were out, and Shiki and Yuri went up to her room. Yuri was excited about visiting a girl's house for the first time while Shiki was unimpressed having been there before. Yuri stared at him like he was a stalker from the next season of Future Diary when he mentioned that he's been here before. When they entered the room, they were hit with a wall of pink decor like a Barbie doll room. Shiki tried to keep his cool, but struggled with his thoughts like how Tanjiro fights off demons in Demon Slayer. 2,000 words in one second of trying to slit a demon's throat. Yuri noticed and gave him a look that noted, Dude, you're so obvious. Mina showed up with a drink Shiki had never seen before. He tasted it and deemed it good. They started asking each other practice questions. Shiki went first, and then Yuri took her turn, taking a bit longer to answer. When it was her turn to ask questions, Shiki answered quickly while Mina just sat there looking like she was in the background of a Naruto filler episode. Gosh, I've always hated those. After a while, Shiki realized he was way past his curfew and rushed home. On his way out, he bumped into Maya. Bumped into is an understatement. He dived headfirst into her ironically huge melons. She reminds me of Yurihia from Hybrid ex heart whom I awarded the title The Meloneer she offered to drive him home. During the drive, she made small talk, thanking him for helping Mina with her chocolate problems. When Maya dropped him off, she gave him a drink. As soon as he turned around, he faced his grandma, who's been waiting to give him a correctional knock. The next morning, Shiki looked like he hadn't slept at all, thanks to his grandma scolding him for missing curfew and hanging out with his friend's mom. She threatens to throw him out if he breaks her rules again. On his way to school, Shiki's mood lifted when he came across another angel. She was staring at some crows and chased them away with a stick. At school, Shiki told Mina about the angel he encountered, and she identified her as Reina, their school's idol. Mina went on and on about how amazing Reina was until she calmed down and asked Shiki for another study session. He made up an excuse to avoid it, and Mina noticed something was off, so she decided to study with Yuri instead. Yuri turned her down because they ended up talking all night after Shiki left the previous night. While the girls had lunch, Shiki was in the library trying to study. Reina, however, was snoring loudly like a giant sleeping bear. He watched her, and when she woke up mumbling about Hitler, Reina then appeared in front of him, claiming she was the library president and had the right to nap any time. She checked his math answers, corrected them, and then walked away. That that evening, Shiki's grandma said it was time for a special ceremony to help his focus since he's been distracted lately. They were interrupted by the doorbell. Shiki opened the door to find Reina, who said she was just delivering the neighborhood bulletin. Amazed by his traditional outfit, she hugged him and was rubbing on his robe. Grandma walked in and, shock, seeing Reina petting Shiki like a kitten. The grandma shouted and Reina explained that Shiki caught her when she slipped. Surprisingly, his grandma complimented Reina's look, making Shiki space out like a classic simp. Grandma gave up on the ceremony when she noticed that he ogled at her and told Shiki he had to move into the top 10 in school or he'd be deported back to Tokyo. Shiki realized that his grandma's words were true, and in order to stay back at Hokkaido, he'll have to study and study hard at it. He bumped into Reina, who came to inquire if her hug put him in trouble with grandma. He said it didn't. She saw he was stressed or worried about something, she asked him, and he confessed his struggles with studying. Rena offered to tutor him. He was reluctant, but after hearing that she has been the school's ace since the day she set foot on school grounds, he immediately agreed. She promised to share all her study strategies since she's always aced her exams. Shiki agreed, and Rena invited him to the library storage room after school, a place only the library committee could access. Rena was clearly interested in Shiki, but he was too innocent to notice. He knew, though, that he'd be alone with her, so he's putting his thoughts together so they don't run wild. 
Mina's mom, Maya, set out for shopping. She tried to take Mina along with her, but Mina was still bummed out about her grades. As Reina and Shiki walked to school, Mina spotted them and was more fascinated by Reina than jealous of Shiki. She idolized Reina and wished she were friends with her too. A heavy flow of jealousy hit her and she stopped walking for a few seconds. After classes, Mina was disappointed when Shiki chose to study alone again. She didn't push him, understanding his need to get back on track. Shiki and Reina met in the storage room. Instead of a study haven, it looked more like a cozy hangout. Shiki tried to focus despite his overactive imagination. Reina helped him correct his minor mistakes and reviewed his answer sheet. With her help, Shiki started practicing math from scratch. The day flew by and Reina asked Shiki why he was studying so hard. He hinted at his grandma's conditions. Reina, thinking of her reward, asked Shiki out on a date if he made it into the top 10. She made her move before Mina did, crazy. Reina went about her days as usual. Shiki, meanwhile, studied hard and called Reina at night with questions and over-the-phone study sessions. His grandma brought him night snacks to keep him going. When test day arrived, Mina was glad it was finally over. Reina was nervously praying for Shiki's success. Shiki gave his best during the test. Yuri was relaxed about her 72nd rank. Shiki reached Reina first and proudly told her he placed third. He was worried about Reina because she had spent so much time helping him, but she reassured him that she topped the ranks again. She reminded him of their date, and Shiki got ready in traditional clothes, as Reina also wore a kimono. Her look was like a character from My Neighbor Totoro, which stunned Shiki, who couldn't keep his eyes off her. On their date, Mai saw them on the sidewalk. At the park, Shiki didn't know where to go next and apologized to Rina for not planning the date, being new in town. Rina didn't mind, she was just happy to be with him. That one could easily mistake them as a couple, and I can see their relationship heading there. Mina called in a second winger, Yuri. They both spy on Shiki and Rina. They're at the moment in a place that looks like a mall. The couple ended up at a crane game shop. Rina wanted a weird soft toy and Shiki tried to win it but failed miserably. Yuri, a crane game expert, thought Shiki was a total noob and wanted to step in to help out, but Mina stopped her from blowing their cover. Shiki managed to win a little squirrel toy for Rina, which only stung Mina more. Yuri got distracted while playing the crane game. She almost depleted the game of the wins. They lost sight of Shiki and Rina, who had decided to watch a movie. Rina took the movie very seriously and got emotional over the female lead who shared her insecurities and need for approval. Rina mentions that she also felt the need for approval ever since she was a child, though she's the trophy of every class she gets in. She still feels like she is not appreciated for it, but Shiki reassured her that many admired her for her hard work, winning her heart. Rina asked about Shiki's relationship status, stating that if he was seeing anyone, he wouldn't be out with her that long and it must have been lonely since he just moved into town and might not have anyone to talk to or keep him company. He told her he was single but had found precious friends in Hokkaido. Mina and Yuri were undercover and they eavesdropped on all Shiki and Rina conversed about. Mina jumped out of hiding when Shiki mentioned that he would introduce Rina to his friends. She blew her cover just like that. Putting aside the obvious spying and intruding, Mina told Shiki that she wasn't going to let him have Rina all to himself. Shiki was embarrassed. He introduced Mina and Yuri to Reina, who was delighted by the fanfaro. Mai appeared out of the blue and declared this social gathering a party celebrating her clothes selling out and treated everyone to barbecue. They all got along well, and Mai taught them a new way to enjoy pork. Look at how neat and organized the table is. Let me introduce Goku, Luffy, Saitama, Naruto, Tokido. I'm about to call a name that might strike a nerve. Shasha Brown, Lord Beerus, Tengen. I could go on with this list. If they sit at this table all together, it'll be a total mess. Add Ren Goku who would scream Umai after every bite. It'll be an epic gathering. Mai teased Shiki, saying he was surrounded by three beauties. Mina admired Reina for her academic success and looks, while Yuri thought Reina had it easy being smart. Mina clarified that Reina worked hard to be first. Shiki confirmed what he said was true, making Reina smile warmly. As they left, Mina asked Shiki about him and Reina. He said it wasn't like the way she's making it up in her head, making Mina happy. She teased him about a few future date where he'd spend the night. She was only joking about the sleeping over part, but was drop dead serious about the date. White day is approaching, Mina and Yuri look forward to what Shiki would be preparing to gift them. Speaking of the devil, Shiki shows up at school. Mina ran to him and asked him about White Day. He says he's preparing gifts for them, but that's not the good part. A red-haired guy eavesdrops on them. What could be his reason? It was just Matsuo, and he was seeking advice from Shiki. 
He was the one that down-talked Mina on Valentine's Day and received a threat from Yuri. He's been on his best behavior since then and wants to make things right by gifting them on White Day. Shiki advises Matsuo that facing them might be hard but tells him to just apologize. Mine would forgive him and Yuri would too. Shiki wants to make sweets for Yuri, Minami, and Rina for White Day so he asked his grandma to teach him how to make sweets. She liked the new customs and guided him. On White Day, Matsuo apologized properly to Minami. Shakina Yuri, who were eavesdropping, came out. Yuri accepted his apology. And FYI, the apology came with a fully boxed onion pie from Uzenya for both Mina and Yuri. Shiki then gave them the rice cakes he made. Shiki reports back up his grandma about how everyone loves the sweet she helped him make and requested the recipe be written out so he could send it to Mina who wants to try making the sweets at home, knowing it's Shiki's favorite sweet. To show appreciation, Matsuo invited Shiki Smelt fishing at the lake, a frozen landscape. It was Shiki's first time, so he accepted. They arrived at the venue and ran into Minami, who was there with her dad. Mina does this every year with her family. They chose a spot to fish together, but had no luck. Matsuo checked on his dad, leaving Shiki and Mina alone. Shiki asked Mina if she was bored and stated that it's been a while that they were alone. She was and will always be happy to be with him. She showed him new makeup trends, aspiring to be a makeup artist. She talks about the dream, even though she said she wants to study abroad. Shiki thought she was a natural and would be very good if she put her mind down to study. His words were sweet and made Minami's heart flutter. She noticed Shiki's nice skin and offered to apply lip balm on him, but that was a booby trap. Shiki was thinking that will lead to an indirect kiss, but Mina was going for a direct kiss to Da Lips, but her plans were foiled as Matsuo came back with good news bad news to them, that his dad caught a good amount of fish. They changed their location and began to catch so many fish they cooked and ate and it must have been a wonderful time. After being outside, Shiki caught a fever. Yuri wishes him well over texts. Rina heard from grandma when she came along with the neighborhood report. She ran back and brought for him a bottle of water with a message on it saying he should stay hydrated. Hearing about it, Mina quickly came over to take care of him. She came along with peppermint sweets that really helped to ease Shiki's sore throat. It was stimulating for Shiki, but he felt a whole lot better after a good rest. When he woke up, he thanked Mina for spending time with him, and I might have forgotten to add, but that dress she wore was blue hair. Mary fine. You can't see them, but my eyes are sparkling right now. She says to herself that it's be wonderful if they spent time together always. That's love. That's love right there. At the brink of winter and for the first time, I can finally see the roads because the snow has significantly cleared and the kids can run around a little now without the help of John Frost. Mina waited for Shiki so they could walk to school together. She worried they'd be in different classes and wanted to spend as much time as possible with him. Shiki reassured her that even though they'll be in different classes, he'll still come and see her, and as the anime may god may have it, they were in the same class, along with Yuri and Matsuo. Yuri looked forward to playing games with Shiki. In class, the teacher asked for volunteers for president and vice president. Matsuo nominated Shiki and Mina and Yuri agreed. Shiki accepted and Mina took the VP role, which Yuri had considered but didn't speak up in time. This is why you should always speak up. At home, Yuri introduced Shiki to a multiplayer game, inviting him to her virtual mountain. His in-game name was Hanakoto and hers was Tamu. She took him to her castle, making things. He was the first she ever hosted in her castle. Shiki's place was at default settings, so Yuri invited him to her mountain to gather items. They collected wood and built him a Frankenstein-looking house. Yuri admired Shiki, Minami, and Matsuo's bravery to speak up in class today. Shiki noted Yuri's growth from an introvert to someone who defended Mina and got angry at Matsuo. The next day, Mina and Shiki stayed behind to work. Mina hinted at wanting to spend more time with Shiki. He mentions that she's been teasing him a lot today, but little did he know that in her field, she has let a flower of love bloom to be a whole garden. Their teacher interrupted as Mina was about to take things up a notch. On their way back, Mina asks Shiki to make out a day for them to hang out, saying she has something important she has to tell him. Ooh! In Kevin Hart's voice, she about to go down. Shiki was waiting by the station, looking around nervously. Mina showed up a bit late. She wanted to take Dashiki out, but kept the plan hush-hush. 
It was a far distance and would take three hours. They hopped on a train since the place was far. Mina dozed off during the ride, looking so peaceful that Shiki couldn't help but think she looked like a goddess, he thought out loud, and she heard because she woke up at the nick of time to heart it. They arrived in Apshiri town and decided to ride bicycles, and after that, they stopped at a diner to eat. They then wandered into a store where Mina sked Shiki's opinion on a hairpin. He also picked up a bracelet that caught his eye. They took a bus to Azura town, and as they neared their destination, Mina covered Shiki's eyes and led him to a stunning park full of cherry blossoms. Shiki was thrilled by the surprise, so thrilled that he cried just a tiny bit. They took loads of pictures, and Mina told him she visited the park with her family before. They asked an elderly couple to snap a photo of them, then climbed to a shrine on top of a hill. Mina wished to return there with Shiki in the future, and Shiki hoped their relationship would grow. Mina got excited about a nearby go-kart track, knowing Shiki had never tried it. They raced and had a blast and ended their day with ice cream, but it was time to head home. Shiki gave Mina the bracelet and she asked him to put it on her wrist, creating a romantic moment. Mina asked how they looked to others that day and Shiki, clueless, said they looked like close friends. Minami's face fell. Shiki realized his mistake and tried to confess, but Mina interrupted, saying she was leaving to study makeup artistry abroad. She felt she was falling behind since everyone else was so serious about their dreams and felt so inspired by Shiki and his aura. Heartbroken, Shiki hugged Mina, and when he let her go, he realized that his eyes were full of tears. Even Mina was shocked to her core. But I got to admit, she looked fire today, I almost fell in love with her too. A park worker told them it was closing time, and they rushed to catch the last bus, but missed it. Shiki called his dad, who suggested staying at a nearby hotel owned by a friend. It was a golden opportunity, and they headed to the hotel. Mina informed her mom, who was surprisingly okay with it. I've always felt she has an agenda for her daughter to carry out. At the hotel, Shiki freaked out about sharing a room with Minami. She took the first shower, and Shiki, in a panic, tried to distract himself with TV. When Mind emerged from the bathroom, Shiki was asleep. She kissed him goodbye the next morning and left a note deciding to leave without waking him. Shiki didn't contact Yuri for a while. Asuka, an old friend, invited Yuri to karaoke, but she declined. Asuka teased her about needing a boyfriend, making Hina think Yuri had someone in mind. Yuri blushed, confirming it. Mina and her mom then told Yuri about Minami's plans. Mina thanked Yuri for helping her realize her dream. Mina was ready to study abroad, and Yuri informed Shiki. Devastated, Shiki still had Minami's note but couldn't face her. Realizing he'd regret not seeing her off, he begged his dad to take him to the airport. His dad, Hirota, canceled his online meeting to help his son. Minami, lost in thought, didn't hear Shiki calling at the airport. Surprised when he pulled her, she blushed as he handed her the hairpin. Shiki told her how much he cherished their time together and that he'd wait for her. Mina laughed, revealing she was only going abroad for two weeks and should have told him sooner. They laughed off the dramatic moment. Two weeks flew by. At school, Shiki brought lunch. Knowing Mina was coming back, he had snacks ready, and Mina started eating them right in class, happy to be home. 